Hey Park, it's Pastor Rafe again. Uh, well, we continue to be in this extended season of not being able to gather together. And I have to confess that uh, I grow weary in not being able to see all of you and gather together on a Sunday and have touch points with each and every one of you. But I've been encouraged as we've gone through this, as we've been having our prayer meetings online and getting to see a lot of your faces and join together in prayer has been good. And so I encourage you, if you haven't joined one of those yet, uh, please consider joining them. Well, the main one's on Wednesday nights, but then we'll have additional touch points throughout the week on Monday and Friday, shorter prayer meetings. Uh, so today at noon, actually, we'll have a chance to jump on and, and see each other's face. My heart in all of this, in this season that we're in, is that God would be forming something very powerful in us as a people of God. So if you're a Christian and you're watching this, my, my deep desire as a pastor is that as Christians navigate a trial like COVID-19, like being isolated, and some of the dangers that frankly are a reality that come with something like the nature of COVID-19, my hope is what would be being formed in, in us is something very real and powerful in terms of our relationship with God. This is a season, all seasons this is true of, but particularly in a season of trial like this, where we should be regularly going to the Word of God, listening to the Word of God, reminding ourselves of the promises of Scripture, and allowing them to move from our head down to our heart and ultimately in the way we live our life through our hands and our feet. That the things God has spoken of in Scripture are not only true, but it is the only foundation to build your heart and your life on. Many of us have built entire lives around something other than the promises of God as communicated through the Scriptures. And, and that life will not sustain us. And I think a lot of the world is figuring that out right now. Uh, that a lot of the fears and anxieties that the world has as we navigate this moment, uh, they're being, the reason those fears and anxieties are there is not just because we're in a trial, but, but it's because we don't have a, a secure footing to navigate this moment. But that's not true for the Christian. For the Christian, your feet should be secure on the Word of God. And so I'm hoping and praying that this is a season of deeply digging into God's Word. And what I've been trying to do with these short videos is to point us to God's Word and to help us dig into particularly the Psalms. The book of Psalms is right in the middle of the, the Bible in the Old Testament. And literally, it was the hymnal of the Old Testament church. It was the, the hymnal where God's people would turn to these ancient songs and they would sing. And they'd sing the words to the Psalms. And as they sang them at different purposes and for different reasons, as they sang them, their hearts would be stirred up to the reality of who God is. Throughout Scripture, we find a lot of propositional truths, a lot of kind of just direct kind of systematic teaching on who God is. But when you read the Psalms, you're, you're invited into the emotional and spiritual component of how you process all of life in light of the promises of God. So they're a very helpful place for us to turn in this season. Today I want to dig into Psalm 121 with us. What a powerful psalm this is. Some of these words you may have heard before uh, as there's some, you know, in the world of the church, there are some, uh, some verses that are repeated often. Uh, but it's a really wonderful psalm. So I, I encourage you, open up your Bibles. And if you, uh, if you have them, Psalm 121, open them up and you can read through it with me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little bit of context for this psalm. And then I'm going to read it to us and give us just a little bit of commentary to encourage us today and to root us deeply in God's Word. Uh, just to note, I'm deeply relying on a wonderful commentary by James Boyce on the book of Psalms. And so some of the notes I'll be touching on today and some of the ideas are, are kind of rooted right there in that commentary. So grateful for his work navigating this psalm. Bit of context. As you look at this psalm, the first thing you'll see is that right next to Psalm 21, there's a subtitle that says it's a song of ascent. A song of ascent. What does that mean? Well, this section of, of the Psalms is a, a, if you look, most of these, like Psalm 120, Psalm, Psalm 121, Psalm 122, they're all subtitled a song of ascent. Jerusalem was a city on a hill. And so when you made a, a, a journey to Jerusalem in the Old Testament, which the people of God would do regularly throughout the year for different festivals and for different uh, reasons, they'd make this big pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Well, as you ascended and as you made your way towards Jerusalem in a big caravan of people, you would sing together these psalms. These were literally songs that would be sung annually as they made this journey towards Jerusalem. And, 
And you've got to kind of get yourself in the mindset of the expectation and the heart of the people of God who are making this journey. It wasn't easy to make this journey. We're talking Old Testament days here. There weren't nice, nifty, clean roads and cars like we have now. Some people, it was a very dangerous journey. So they go in these big caravans and, and you left your kind of the, the day-to-day business of your life behind in whatever town you were from. And all the Jewish people from all over the land of Israel would be making this journey together towards Jerusalem. It was very uh, filled with anticipation and excitement and hope because you expected that God was going to be doing something in the life of his people, uh, particularly during these festivals. So these songs of ascent were filled with anticipation, and you can literally read that uh, in the words as we sing them. So let me uh, read the psalm to us. And then we'll dig into a little bit of commentary. Again, imagine the scene. Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Psalm 121. The psalm begins with that line, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my hope come from? Now again, imagine these pilgrims. They're on this journey to Jerusalem and they've been kind of, you know, it's a bit scary. You're making your way through some dangerous places. Anything could happen on the road in that day. And and finally, as they're just approaching Jerusalem, they can begin to see the hills of Jerusalem before them. And it was likely at that point that they began to sing this song. I lift my eyes to the hills. The hills before them where that festival was going to take place. From where does my help come from? They're looking towards that place in the Old Testament when, where God literally dwelled among his people in a physical temple. That's the Old Testament, the way that God worked. Uh, he, he dwelled among them in a physical temple. And as they made their way towards that place where God's glory dwelt within the temple, they were filled with excitement. Where does my, my help come from? Well, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. They were filled with anticipation and they were looking to the place where God was. And they were saying, of all the dangers I face in this life, of everything I've been going through on a day-to-day basis, whatever that is, when I come near to the presence of God, I know that I'm coming to a place where I have help. I have sustaining power. And look, it's not just any God that they're coming before. They, they, They call to the God who made heaven and earth. Now, that might seem like an obvious note, but it's important for us to take a moment to realize what this psalm is saying. Because we live in a day, if we're just honest, where there is an outright rejection that any kind of God made heaven and earth. But the Christian is the person who says emphatically and clearly that it's not just any God who made heaven and earth. It wasn't just chance that made all that is. It wasn't just a random, spontaneous burst of energy that created all that there is. But there was a loving, guiding, intentional, sovereign hand that created all that is. And it's to that God, that same God that spun the earth into motion, the same God that continues to sustain the earth by the word of his power, it's that same God that we run to He's powerful to create, but he's also powerful to sustain. And that same God has made so many promises to us as a people of God. He's promised to be with us, to be in relationship with us, and to be an aid to us in our time of trouble. Psalmist goes on, He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. We're reminded that God is our watchman. It's interesting that there's a word that gets used here a lot throughout this passage, and it's the word keep. Uh, We see it in verse 3, he who keeps you will not slumber. Verse 4, behold, he who keeps Israel. Verse 5, the Lord is your keeper. Verse 7, the Lord will keep you from all evil. Again, he will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out. The Hebrew word for keep that's used there all throughout this psalm, it's a, it's a repeated idea. It's the idea of guarding. 
It's the idea of being a watchman and standing guard before you as a protector around your life, whatever you might go through. That's one of the main themes of this psalm is that the, the God of the Bible who has made promises in your life is your guard. And so when the world around us who does not know God is, is in a sense frantic trying to figure out what to do in the midst of a virus, what to do in the midst of our, our rhythms and our routines and our life being thrown upside down and frankly new dangers, the, the Christian looks towards the God who made heaven and earth looks toward the God who has made himself known in the person of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. And we say, he is the one that sustains us. And there's promises that he has made to us, not to keep us from everything that could ever happen, certainly not, but to be enough for us and to guard our spirits and our souls in the midst of all of it. He is our keeper. No matter what happens in this life, we have a guard that watches over our souls, that should give us a joy and an abundance to navigate all of this. You know, one of the themes of this psalm is, psalm is that uh, the people of God were called pilgrims. They were making this pilgrimage as they went towards Jerusalem. They were away from their homes. And, and in the New Testament, that theme is picked up on again. Uh, we, we recognize in 1 Peter and in other places in Scripture where God says that you are pilgrims, that your true home is being guarded for you and is forever kept secure in heaven. And, and the knowledge that who you are in Christ, because of what Jesus has done for you on the cross, forgiving your sins, that your home is secure, your sonship in Christ is secure, your eternal satisfaction in God is secure, that should give you an anchor in this life to withstand any storm. Because no matter what you go through, you know that God's enough for you and he's secured you. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He'll keep your life. The Lord will be your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. It's one thing to sing this song. It's one thing to read this song. It's another thing to believe it. The question I have for you is, do you believe it? Do you believe that God is enough for you? Has these promises actually sunk from just being something we read to being something that you actually live in alignment with? That you're depending by faith on these things? See, that's what faith is. Faith is believing when you can't physically see it all the time with your own eyes. He's made himself true in the person of Jesus Christ, and he's made you these promises. And in light of that, the Christian ought to be living with an abundant hope, even in the midst of trial. I want to read you this quote from uh, Eugene Peterson. Uh, listen to what he says, commenting on this psalm. He says, The Christian life is not a quiet escape to a garden where we can walk and talk uninterruptedly with our Lord, nor a fantasy trip to a heavenly city where we can compare blue ribbons and gold medals with others who have made it to the winner's circle. The Christian life is going to God. In going to God, Christians travel the same ground that everyone else walks on. We breathe the same air, drink the same water, shop in the same stores, read the same newspapers. Our citizens under the same governments pay the same prices for groceries and gasoline, fear the same dangers, are subject to the same pressures, get the same distresses, are buried in the same ground. The difference is that each step we walk, each breath we breathe, we know we are preserved by God. We know we are accompanied by God. We know we are ruled by God. And therefore, no matter what doubts we endure or what accidents we experience, the Lord will preserve us from evil. He will keep our life. Christian, you have someone who is watching over your life, who will keep you, who has secured your place in his family if your faith is in Jesus Christ. And I want you to be encouraged this morning as you reflect on those promises. As I close this video, I want to just encourage you, continue to be in God's word, continue to pray for each other. There's much work to do as we pray for each other as a body of Christ, as we share the love of Christ with a world that's wanting it and hungry for hope in this season. See you soon, church.